Hello, VOD watchers on YouTube, and welcome to Grand Theft Auto 5 with a Therapist Part 5. I hope you've enjoyed Parts 1 through 4 so far. It has been an incredibly enjoyable run. I know last run had a lot of mayhem in it, so I'm looking forward to what tonight's got in store for us. As always, take a second and like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment at some point if there's something that you want to say about the playthrough. I love reading them. Uh, the engagement on this series has been amazing, so thank you so much for all of it. It has done wonders to get us into the algorithm, to get the channel discovered and all that stuff. So please, please continue to engage with these videos if you enjoy them. If they're meaningful to you and you think other people would enjoy them, please share them. I really appreciate when you do that as well. Uh, check out all the links in the description. Check out the new uh, merch store. And thank you just in general for all of your support. It really does mean a lot. Let's rock. Okay, so uh, now that we successfully robbed the bank, I guess we're just going to kind of chill. It looks like we've got a mission with Michael, so maybe we go check in with him. As Franklin. They're doing very well, Sean. Where's my bike? Oh, no. Oh, wait, there it is. All right. Haha, <laughs> what's up, Jugger? Screen's doing the weird thing again. My god, why does it keep doing this? There we go. It's fixed. Thank you, Skog. An easy fix. Let's go talk to Michael. Really wish I could play music, but DMCA sucks. Ooh, anyway, here's close. Wonder here's Wonderwall. Today is gonna be the day. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that to you guys. I won't do that to you. Slate, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate it. I will say, if you are watching this on YouTube, as you await for me to talk to Michael, if you ever want to jump in live with us, I stream on Twitch at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Would love to have you stop by, and my game's gonna... Oh, I thought my game was gonna crash, and it didn't. Love to have you stop by. Uh, Brian, can you DM me the bingo link? Because I will add it to my bot, so that people can do exclamation point bingo and get the link. I'm hardcore vibing to your music on Spotify. Awesome. New album coming out June 10th on Spotify and Apple Music. And it will be in the merch store on June 3rd. Album number four is on its way. And... All right, Michael. What do you got for me, my dude? I'll hear Franklin rolling up. Thank you, Brian. Love how I can just walk in. We're on that kind of basis now. Oh, hey, there you are. What's cracking? So, we all good? Hell yeah, we all good. We did. Yeah, you fucking ain't right, we did. So, here's the sh See that big ass portrait of Amanda in the living room? I have never noticed that. I don't have any analysis for that. I just noticed that. That portrait, that seems a bit vain to me. I remember one time when I was in college, I was sitting behind a person in one of my lecture halls. And the background, like her desktop wallpaper, was just a picture of herself. And I thought that was so weird. Like, just her. No friends. No, no, like, anything, like, interesting. It was literally just a photo of herself. I, and it just... It's, it's like... Amanda's always watching. 
I don't know. I just I, that that's I that, I got distracted by that, so I needed to say something about it. Jot, Lester's offloading the gems. He knows a guy. Get us fifty cents on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, we might actually have a little spending money left after we pay off that psychotic Mexican motherfucker. Whew. Cheers. So that's that, right? I'll so we can pay off that psychotic Mexican motherfucker. Chat. If somebody, if you had a home that was on the side of a hill, and somebody holed up in that house running away from somebody who was chasing them because they'd had an affair with a man's wife. And that man hooked your house up to his truck and pulled it off the hill. Do you think you'd be angry? Do you think you might want that person to pay you back for all the damage they did on their house? As far as I'm concerned... That psychotic Mexican motherfucker is totally in the right. <laughs> he has every reason to be angry with Michael. Okay? So, what this tells us is the way in which Michael spins things in his mind to absolve himself of accountability, but maybe even more so than accountability... This idea that he is a bad person, which he seems to be very averse to. So it's as easy as looking at a person's response to what you did as psychotic. That's an easy way to save face. But it also, if you're not careful, it starts to perpetuate a narrative that you didn't do anything wrong. You were totally, you were acting on intent. Your intentions matter more than the impact. And if you start looking at people's reactions to the things that you do as problematic, if you don't see those as real natural consequences at times for the actions that you engage in, you're going down a pretty nasty wormhole. So this to me makes my antenna go up with Michael because there's really nothing psychotic about what happened in response to him pulling the house off the hill. Michael put himself in that situation. Michael also said we about the payment on the on the uh, the house and he yeah I mean he, I think he by having Franklin with him when he did that is probably assuming that Franklin was part I mean there's a Franklin was part of it even though it was his decision now Franklin could say to Michael what do you mean we you pulled the house down I will say like Franklin to an extent was complicit in it Franklin could have you know could have bailed and did not so I do think Franklin like isn't entirely off the hook here. But Michael was the one that was pretty unhinged there. He told Franklin to, to hitch it to the house, and Franklin said yes. Fra Franklin didn't say no. He didn't say, you do it yourself, old man. He went over and he hooked it up. So... Hope so. The whole job. Everything about it. Anyone who knows your file, what is wrong with you? Davey! Long time no see. And what about Trevor? If that fruitcake realizes, no, no, finds out you're alive, you are D-O-N-E fucked. Hey, don't worry about Trevor. Trevor's dead. Gotta be. Besides, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Whatever the hell it is you're talking about. Nothing. Really? The criminals are believed to escape with millions of dollars worth of gems, oh. precious stones, and hey. fake rings. Albert's story had a lucky escape when the thieves ran straight into it. Yeah, I was just doing my job, and I say to this guy, hey, you gotta move these bikes. I don't know anything about that. And this other guy runs out of the shop, pushes me over and says something like, you forget thousands of things every day. You make sure this is one of them. That was pretty scary. Back to you in the studio. You want to get lit now, sugar? Tre Trevor, baby, you want to you wanna smoke up now? 
Don't do it, Johnny. Don't do it. Trevor! You been with my girl again? I'm speaking with you, asshole. Don't do it, Johnny. I told him, Trevor. I told him. We all get high. We all get high. But that don't Leave make it, it right. Johnny. Leave it. The crystal has got us, babe, but don't make it right. Don't make nothing right. Not what you're done with me. I'm telling Johnny, leave it. I ain't leaving nothing. Trevor, I'm talking to you, motherfucker. Are you? What are you saying? Fucking my girl, man. It's wrong. Well, I gotta fuck someone. You want me to fuck you instead? I is that the problem here? Take off your pants, cowboy. All right, let's, let's fuck. You think this is funny? Get them off! I told him to leave it, Trevor. I told him. Leave it. Leave it. Shut up, Ron. I'm about to fuck me a meth head, ain't I, cowboy? Get my boy sucked from his toothless gums, huh? Fuck you, Trevor. Oh. I still love her. All right, cowboy. Hey, I know. Hey, come on. Shh. I don't mean nothing by it, man. So I just... I know. I messed up. I know, cowboy. It's okay, man. Give me a... Fucking shit! Cut! 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 Who the fuck are you speaking to? Who? Who? I'm talking to you, huh? You fuck! Johnny! Huh? Next time, don't get in my fucking face! I just saw a fucking ghost and I gotta hear your crap! Get up! Get up! Fuck you then! Johnny! Wait! <laughs> <laughs> now I know what everybody is probably thinking, which is, oh man, Dr. Mick's gonna go nuts on Trevor. Uh, not yet. I will say that it is pretty clear that Trevor commands a lot of the spaces that he's in. Probably every space that he's in. And there was a dynamic that we just saw that I am going to point out because it is a dynamic we see in situations where there is an abuser. So when people engage in abusive acts, when they are unhinged in the things that they do, when they just steamroll their way through their life and other people's lives without boundaries, uh, to varying degrees of intensity, it can become abuse. People who are victims of abuse or problem behavior often know that they are victims of that. However, there's a power dynamic that basically keeps the victim held down so that they do not stand up to the abuser. However, there are times when victims will feel emboldened or empowered against an abuser and will actually stand up for themselves in the way that their friends and family will often say, you should stand up for yourself without really understanding the context, which this guy did. And what was really interesting about that was that Trevor didn't really have to do much in order to get this guy to stand down basically completely. Trevor stayed relatively neutral and calm. I understand that the content of what he was saying might have been a little bit unsettling. But this guy walked himself through his own, oh shit, I just stood up to a person who can hurt me. And we saw him immediately take on blame for the fact that he stood up for himself. And we saw him soften immensely, which is something that you will see happen sometimes with victims of abuse when they stand up to their abusers is they go, oh no, what have I done? I must be in the wrong because they've been pushed to a point where any way in which you would stand up to an abuser is seen as a problem and that you've done something wrong. And he softened on his own. And to me, that is more sad. I mean, him being beat to death, like to, uh, 
cr like the crap out of him is not good, right? But like from an emotional standpoint, we saw that the internal sense of abuser was already there without Trevor even having to do anything. And then Trevor goes to console him, wallops him over the head, stomps on him in front of the other people to reassert that he has the power and control in the engagement, which is what abusers do. The best abusers are the ones who get into people's heads and create preventative actions for their victims so they don't even have to do anything because they're 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 internalized in them as don't even attempt to stand up to this guy because you have no chance and it seems to me that that's a dynamic that trevor has already cultivated amongst this group of people we don't see anybody freaking out at him saying dude that was totally unhinged you shouldn't have done that everybody's just like oh yeah that's trevor because they don't want to be next that's some pretty scary stuff This is why it's dangerous for people who are in abusive situations at times to speak up and stand up against their abusers. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> that dopey cowboys forced our hand. We gotta find the rest of the lost. Dopey cowboy. Wait, this ghost I saw, his name is Michael Townley. Sounds like he's living in Los Santos. Find him. Really? Uh, my cousin's there, but I don't... Find him, Wade! Does this mean I don't have to come see the bikers? We're in a hurry, but not that much of a hurry. But if we bury Johnny in the desert and then quiet down that bitch Ashley you was in, then they don't need to find out about it. You think it's clever to disrespect women? Disrespect? What? I, I wasn't disrespecting. I was just saying we should kill her. You called her a bitch. Ain't you got a mother? Everyone got mothers, at least one. Oh, man. Okay, there probably will be a lot of pausing with Trevor. Okay, so um, we are seeing a person here in Trevor that is consumed with controlling every engagement he's in. And the way that he is doing that to an extent is one you surround yourself by people that you perceive to be less intelligent than you because then you always have the upper hand in conversation there is nothing my sense is that there is nothing that wade could say to trevor that trevor will not have a witty rebuttal for so trevor asks these questions he pokes he prods he knows the power he has because of the things that he's done and he gets Wade off kilter so that Wade is questioning himself. You know, don't you ever like, you know, him calling a woman a bitch after he just watched Trevor beat a guy with a bottle and stomp on his face and, you know, have sex with the guy's girlfriend in his kitchen. He calls the woman a bitch and Trevor immediately takes the moral high ground in a way that like completely throws Wade off. One of the best ways to throw people off is to be unpredictable. And I think Trevor is controlling himself in a way that is unpredictable to the people around him, which is a way to maintain power in conversation as opposed to even physical prowess. I have no idea at this point why that would be how Trevor orients himself to these engagements, but it really stands out to me. People who are very crafty and witty uh, who want control all the time and maybe feel some sense of insecurity when the world's not in their control will often surround themselves by people they perceive to be less than them so that they can continue to control all the engagements. And I think we're seeing that here. We got Ron and Wade with us.
Trevor was very clearly affected by seeing Michael. Understandably so. But I wonder if that is part of what has sparked him into a, a rage. Which, again, that does not clear him of his behaviors. But would maybe explain why he's seeing red. The bikers are meant to be over by the farm on the right. Hey, you seen Ashley? Johnny's looking for her. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, I just did, just 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I saw her on the end of this penis here. Uh, Johnny ain't gonna be cool if you messing with her again. Oh, really? Well, you don't think so, huh? Well, why don't we just ask him then, huh? Hey, hey, cowboy, you mind that I fucked your old lady? Sorry, what was that? Well, no, 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 you don't mind? Oh, because you're a dead man? And the only sentient part of you left is this little bit of brain and the gristle on the end of my boot? Well, thank you very much, cowboy. Bullshit! Oh, I like it, denial. That is first part of the grieving process, brothers. Now let's all hold hands, huh? Well, looks like you got something you want to say, huh? You got something you need to say? This better be bullshit. Oh, where are you guys going, huh? Let's go, ladies. If that van takes us back to the camp, this area ain't going to have a biker problem much longer. Down he fell! They're a fine kill! The van's got to pass, but the guys on bikes can go! Did you see the look on their faces? We scared them, didn't we? Yeah! Thank fuck they didn't make you for the harmless idiots you are! Gaga! You need to beat mountain back here! Or, or strap or something! There's the other one! Or strap or something! I only keep things in the back, I don't mind losing. Oh! Okay! Now we follow the van back. Aren't we meant to be letting the van run? I thought you was letting them go to the others. Uh, I can't see us taking out all the bikers this go, boss. I mean, there'll be some by that airstrip, and some over, you know, by that... If not today, their time will soon be upon them. Maybe you should hold off shooting the van. Uh... Hold off till we get there, right? If we go off the side on the left there, we should make it across. I should, um, okay, so I should put a bit of a disclaimer here uh, that some people may find Trevor to be pretty unsettling. And there are some things that are going to ha probably happen when we are with Trevor that you may find yourself getting distressed about. I encourage you to take a step away if you need it. If you need to kind of go for a walk or kind of gather yourself or whatever, if you need to skip through certain parts, there's no shame in that. Uh, I didn't realize we were going to get to Trevor tonight. So uh, just, you know, take care of yourself if you need to. I, I can't do trigger warnings because otherwise I'd have to stop every five seconds. So manage your own uh, triggers if you have them. Manage your own distress. There's no shame in needing to walk away from the stream. This is probably going to become a theme, so I'm not going to pause it every time it happens. But... Trevor, so the reason I, I'm going to give a little bit of context here. So do you ever notice how when there's a bee around or like a fly or something, there's it's kind of unsettling to be around it. Wasps and hornets and bees and stuff fly erratically to unsettle the organisms that are around them. They are unpredictable. They are erratic. The human brain does not respond well when things are erratic. We like patterns. We like consistency. We like predictability. Trevor is like a wasp. Trevor maintains an erratic nature where he is cool. and He looks like he is unhinged, but he is collected as you could be. And he creates massive, massive dissonance. 
for the people around him. And it throws them off completely to a point that he can massively control the engagement. And it's really remarkable how powerful that is. Humans are incredibly unsettled, generally by people who are very silent and people who are very erratic because they're not predictable. You don't know what they're going to do next, and it leaves a pit in your stomach, and it leaves you in a one-down position at all times. Trevor has an immense amount of self-awareness to know how to utilize that in his favor. And though he doesn't utilize it necessarily for good reasons, I in some ways can admire his ability to harness that and be reflexive enough in his understanding of himself to control a lot of really hairy engagements that way. And he's got people around him that aren't going to question him. Because they're not smart enough. And if they are smart enough, he'll totally here. cut them down. I got a feeling, yeah, but we got to make sure. Once you know, you could drop me and Wayne in the trailer. Maybe bring Chef to finish Jesus. that. We do this now, Ron, all of us. No! We're right on these bricks. Oh. Come on, come on. I'm surprised these people are going to wherever they're going knowing that we're following them. Where are we headed? Ah. I'll make my own lost MC colors out of this prick's lather. Oh, look, look, they're pulling up. You did it, Trevor. They're stopping. Sit back and watch the show, you useless pricks. No one comes back and that they got chocolate. But munch. But munch, we're still saying that. Drops hit. Keep your head down. No one go out. Step right up. Step right up. Look out. Kill you. Wipe out this entire camp. This land belongs to the law. Don't worry. There's plenty of me to go around. Oh, shit. I'm almost dead. I'm almost dead. Oh, shit. All right. I didn't realize I was that dead. Oops. We'll try that again. Daddy's going to work. But much? He's not a. Uh, all right, this is not as good of a. Step right up! Step right up! Wiping out my whole customer base. You forget how to use your horn? Have some respect for pedestrians. Okay. Come on, Ron and Wade. Why don't you step up with me, friends? friends? I'm here to offer a way out. Fuck this asshole! 
such a shame we got to kill such a fucking... Come out and avenge your fallen comrade! That was awesome. Woo oh man. All right. Uh, you don't want to know me when I'm irritated. Ooh, give me that body armor. That was nuts. Now, who have I left out? Wait, why would these people leave so many explosive containers out like this? Who's this guy? Boss, get back now! You got nowhere to go, brother! Back up, brother! There we go. Anytime! Chuck, now! <sighs> Wade? What are you still doing here? Are you dead? I said go find a fucking ghost in Los Santos, all right? You looking for motivation? And get me some sticky bombs! Ortega lives near here. Let's go see him. It's one thing messing with tweaked out bikers, but the Aztecas? Man! The Aztecas? It's just a name. Is he Illuminati as well? And a wacky? Not one of those lizard people? I got this Chinese contact you can meet at the end. He'll buy all the meth we can cook. Our enterprise ain't just about meth, it's about guns, too. The Aztecas control the guns, so we're taking them out. Oh boy, what are we doing? Trevor! Don't do it, man! Push the trailer into the river? No way. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> That's another house down the hill. Two for me. My soggy friend, you are out of business. The lost MC are out of business. The guns and crank in this area go through Trevor Phillips Enterprise, or they ain't going. Saying something don't make it true. <laughs> Trevor! Why we can't have nice things, right? That's a hell of a bug. Yeah, I mean, I that's I'm surprised by that. Uh all righty uh so it, 
he's he's not that complex. I mean, I think he presents as complex right now because he just seems to be so unhinged, but my sense potentially about Trevor is he is a type of person that I think scares a lot of us. Because Trevor doesn't seem to actually care about, like, whether he lives. He's got things he cares about. But there seems to be this sense underneath all of it that if Trevor dies, in some ways, whoever kills him would be doing him a favor if he's that miserable. And that's a really scary person to interact with because he's not going to play by the same rules and sensibilities that we generally expect people to play by. And it makes it so that he always has power because really the fundamental final stop thing that any of us can have leveraged over us is our own survival. Like at the end of the day, Living and surviving is a force that so many of us are like up against, but generally don't think about. If you remove that from a person, a fear of death, if you remove that from somebody, oh man, do they get scary. We have to replay this whole goddamn thing. Are you kidding me? Well, okay, so here's a cool opportunity. I'm going to skip the cutscenes, but, uh, this actually presents a really interesting opportunity. I want all of us as we go through this next um, as we go through this next sequence, I want you to pay attention to what I've talked about so far with Trevor. So watch the way that he controls engagements by throwing people off. Because that's really going to be something where like we're going to get I think information about Trevor's mindset and where he's at when he engages in that kind of way with people. And I'll be curious to see what the contrast is in times where maybe Trevor is either afraid of something or cares about something or maybe lets his guard down. Because I think we'll get some really information, really inf interesting information about him in that. All right, well, man, that sucks that we gotta start over completely. All right. Do you find it hard to play as Trevor and stomach the things he says or does while feeling like this is the character I'm playing? Uh, no. I mean, I don't I don't look at Trevor as me per se. I look at Trevor as Trevor. You know, I'm just a bystander that's doing Trevor's will, but like it's not me when we're playing as him. So I can kind of se separate myself from that. It's no it's no different than like when we played like The Last of Us. Like, I don't see myself as Ellie, or I don't see myself as Joel. I am I am controlling them, but their will is their own. It's not mine. There is an autosave. It just didn't fire, apparently. Which is a real bummer. What is the merch promo reward? Uh, I know not what you speak. Are there manual saves in this game? Yes. But you have to be in like a safe house to do it. It's one of the point redemptions. Oh, I got to fix that. Um, The wheels are in motion. We gotta reach out to the rest of them. Here we go. It's a million channel points. Yeah, I gotta fix that. I would say for now, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Wait, this ghost I saw, his name is Michael Townley. 
Sounds like he's living in Los Santos. Would you Find say him. that there's something akin really? to too much uh, self-insertion immersion when you play a game like this? Find him, Wade. No. Does this mean I don't have to come see the bikers? We're in a hurry, but not that much of a hurry. But if we bury Johnny in the desert and then quiet down that bitch Ashley he was in, then they don't need to find out about it. You think it's clever to disrespect women? Disrespect? What? I, I wasn't disrespecting. I was just saying. See, Wade's was she thrown killer. off there. You called her a bitch. Ain't you got a mother? Everyone got mothers, at least one. The bikers are meant to be over by the farm on the right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you seen Ashley? All right. We follow the van back to the rest of them. Then the lost MC are out of this region for good. You got him! Yeah. Who makes the set? I work. You didn't see that coming. Okay, now we follow the van back. Did All right. you see the look on their faces? We scared them, didn't we? Yeah, thank fuck they didn't make you for the harmless idiots you are. You need some seat belts back here, or, or straps, or something. <laughs> I only keep things in the back I don't mind losing. Oh. You gotta slow... Boy, that, that's a hell of a line. Okay, I, I only keep stuff back here that I don't mind losing. Trevor is really pushing also this narrative that these guys are worthless and disposable. They are no different than the people that we've just dispatched on the biker gang. If these guys are reliant on Trevor for their livelihood and for a sense of direction, that's a very powerful statement. Because what that does passively is it pushes them to continually overcompensate to show them to show Trevor their worth it gets them locked into doing things they might not otherwise do to breaking certain boundaries because I need to make sure that I impress Trevor that I'm in his good graces so that he sees me as indispensable because there is really no greater feeling from a power dynamic than having a sense of being indispensable so Trevor continuing to remind these guys that they are worthless bugs that can be squashed at any time is another way to harness power in order to control them. Oh, it up, man. That's a sharp left. Uh, I can't see us taking out all the bikers disco, boss. I mean, there'll be some by that airstrip and some over, you know, by that... If not today, their time will soon be upon them. You letting him go on purpose, Trevor? I don't want to hear another peep! <laughs> Actually, easier for me to drive in first person. There, we should make it across. I'm just giving y'all a different look driving third person this time. Yet? I got a feeling, yeah, but we gotta make sure. Once you know, you can drop me and Wade at the trailer. Maybe bring Chef to finish them. We do this now, Ron, all of us. Come on, come on. That's it, yeah, lead us back. Oh, look, look, they're pulling up. You did it, Trevor. They're stopping. Watch the entrance, boys. No one leaves without my express permission. We're guarding the entrance here. You fucking look asshole. Out. All right, here we go again. Step right up, step right up. Damn it, down, down. This 
blow some stuff up, huh? I warned Johnny, and I'll warn you the same. You ain't gonna be on that hog much longer. Get down. I understand your pain, friends. I'm here to offer a way out. Get him. Wiping out my whole customer base. Let you guys go this time for the sake of time. Fall back! Can I get you to anything? Soda? Snacks? No? Get in the fucking truck! <sighs> Wait! Alright. What are you still doing here? You said. I said go find a fucking ghost in Los Santos, alright? You looking for motivation? And get me some sticky bombs! Alright, almost caught up. Dropping in on Ortega. He has Tekas? That makes me nervous. Ah, don't be nervous, nervous, Ron. He'll be fine with the takeover. Takeover? Trevor! We don't need to. Now the bikers are gone. It's just us, the Aztecas, and the O'Neills. The market's big enough. This Chinese contact's gonna buy crystal fast as we can cook it. You just gotta meet him at the end, and... Yeah, 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 fine, okay. We're, we're nearly there. Yeah, that's interesting. There's an entirely different set of dialogue for that. All right, fingers crossed. I mean, it expressed the same sent sentiment. It was just different verbiage. Trevor. Crazy man, not stupid. You sure you want to do this? The shot callers ain't gonna be happy. He's looking at me. I'll go away, man. But my people, I think he gets the message. Let's go. Go to 
Ron's place. All right. I don't know what these naysayers are talking about. Look at me. I'm cranked on speed most of the time, but I'm productivity personified. You sure achieved a lot today. It was time to put my affairs in order. You going somewhere? As soon as I find that specter on the TV, Michael Townley. He's your buddy you said got shot, right? You guys used to run together. Yeah, that's him. My best pal. I thought he was dead. You're catching on fast. Yeah, the fucking ghost I've been talking about. He's alive? He's walking, and he's talking. He's sticking up joints, so I guess, yeah, that makes him alive, don't it? And I wonder if Trevor is more angry that Michael didn't tell him that he's alive. Like, he's certifiably angry. Like, he's not really staying, I mean, cool and collected as far as it would go for Trevor. Like, he seems to be maybe even sad. I don't know that Trevor would access that. That Michael's alive and didn't let him know that he had to find out this way. It's almost like, a, wait a minute, you're telling me that I'm not important to you? That you wouldn't reach out to me? What the hell, man? I don't know that to be for certain, but I can't really think of any other reason why Trevor would be particularly activated by this. Other than he has some connection with Michael and he's sad that he wasn't brought into the loop that he's How alive. you know it's him? It's his M.O. And it's the same corny shit he was spewing ten years back. This could be a trap, Trevor. What if someone wants you to think he's alive? I was fooled when I thought he was dead. I ain't fooled now. Michael Townley oh, lives wow. and breathes. He's in Los Santos, and he's got some explaining to do. They could be trying to draw you out into the open. That's a conspiracy theory too far, even for you, Ronald. Really? Well, anyway, it seems like a shame for you to be going just as TP Industries is finding its feet. I'll do what I can to put the business on its path before I depart. The company needs you, boss. You'll do fine in my absence. I don't know what this Michael Townley's got that you can't find in the Alamo Sea. What he's got is answers. Remember to wipe, okay. Don't forget, chat. The car, Ron. I need time to think. Run! This is Trevor's safe house. You can park vehicles in the garage. You can modify your vehicle in any customs garage. Cool. You can save your game by sleeping in the bed. Change your clothes by walk walking up to the wardrobe. Guess we're peeing. No flush. There we go. All right. Okay. So. Oh. Speak. You know I don't like using these things. 
They're listening. Then make it quick. That business thing's been set up. The Chinese guy, Mr. Chang, is at the inn. You said that on the phone? What the fuck is wrong with you, damn it, Ron? Right there. That is... Uh, he's good, man. I mean, I it's he's it's not good, but it he's good at what he does. He knows that Ron has paranoia as it relates to this kind of stuff. What better way to make Ron feel like shit and control him than to use that against him by saying, you said that over the phone? I can't believe you did that. No matter what you do, exactly, no matter what you do, Trevor is going to counterbalance it. Every interaction with Trevor is a power play. And he's going to use his intellect and his unpredictability, and he's going to control every single one of those engagements as a result of it. And I will be curious what's, what happens if he gets in the presence of Michael or if he's in a position where his unpredictability isn't going to be useful to him. Now, his environment is... We're going to take a second to kind of talk about this. Living in poverty, it is often hard to maintain a clean environment. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes work that people sometimes just don't have the ability to, to do anything with. And there's only, it's only able to get so clean if you'll notice in the upper right hand of my screen trevor has one hundred and eight thousand dollars so all of a sudden his environment is less about being impoverished and unable to update it it's about his mental state. And whenever I see squalor like this, things unattended to, an environment that's in, a, in real bad shape like this, we often think depression. And if it isn't depression, then potentially it's some level of self-loathing. Some level of, I just don't give enough of a shit about myself to take care of myself. And it's a chaotic environment. It, to me, I think is, uh, Trevor's not an idiot. He's not stupid. Trevor's really smart. And Trevor, I think, probably would have enough insight and wherewithal into his own environment and psyche to potentially know that this is a reflection of his own of his self-worth i you know I, i'm either i'm a piece of shit and i don't deserve better or i don't care it could just be apathy but this isn't about trevor's inability to do anything with his place it's a reflection of his mind and I think that's a very important distinction for us to make because I think it's really easy for us to like look at this and be like, oh, yeah, well, he's a piece of shit. This is the kind of environment we would expect him to be in, and he deserves this. And while I certainly am not going to justify the certain things that Trevor has done, I do think it's important for us to try to understand him better and to get a window into where he's coming from and what his psyche is. And living in this kind of conditions, despite the fact that he does not have to do that. It's a choice. This environment is a choice for Trevor right now. So it really goes to show you maybe how badly Trevor feels about himself. 
Boss, there's some guys stock car racing around the way. You should try it unless you don't want to. Could be fun or not. You'll win a car if you're good, but of course you'll be good. Please don't hurt me for this. Oof. Hey, T. It's Brad from prison. Trevor, I hope you're okay. It's been... It is some time since I wrote you. The guards say I may soon be allowed some visitors, if I'm good. I hope you're staying out of trouble. Either that or give yourself up. Prison ain't bad. In fact, I think you'd love it. I still miss Mikey, but he's in a better place. I ain't got a boyfriend. Thanks for asking. The stuff ain't true about prison unless you want it. Brad. Big bad run. Hey, Trevor, just met these altruist cult guys. They got a camp up in the mountains somewhere and will give you cash if you bring them any lost souls who need to be saved. Sounds like easy money. They say they just want to have them for dinner. Ron. Yikes. I love how Trevor's packing a Windows phone. I had one of those back in the day. I was a big Windows phone fan. It's sad it never worked out. Oh, come on! Uh, let's go do this. Let's go see what that's all about. Hey, Trevor could have a nicer car. He could have a nicer apartment. He chooses not to. Uh, I did not fall. Oh, Crane Lee. Jack, Jock will throttle the deficit just like he used to throttle bad guys. Okay. Sure sounds like it, Asdy. Simply wonderful. And you? About the same. Somewhere stuck between joyful and peachy. Even in this world full of scum and detritus, it's only right that we all bear our share. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Take this poor wretch. On the run, desperate, alone, about to learn the true meaning of suffering, all for a few thousand bucks. Think you can find him for me? Every man has his talents, Maud, and the rigorous administration of justice is, uh, it's one of mine. That's why I love you, Trevor. I'll send you his file. Leave the area. All right, Maud, what do you got me doing? Bond mission. Oh. Email me, Mod.
All right, Ron, what do you got for me, big dog? Come quick, boss. What's going on, Ron? They were here for you. Here for you. Who was here? Them bikers. After you killed Johnny K. And they damage my stuff, huh? They smash up my home, damage my soul. This, 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 this statue here of impotent rage, this fucking meant more to me than Johnny K meant to anyone, and they smashed it. Those pathetic, midlife crisis, hog riding, shaven headed, fruity leather, chapped wearing fucking assholes. They're assholes, Trevor. They are. They're chap wearing assholes. Oh, wait, 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 you little shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, <laughs> Michael fucking Townley, right? Bitch wife, two kids, 45. Find him. Los Santos is a big, big place, Trevor. There's lots of people. You are fucking useless. Huh? Find out who did that fucking robbery, all right? And if Michael Townley lives there or anyone matching his description, I'm going to kill you and your fucking cousin. Am I being clear now? Yes, Trevor. Thank you, Wayne. Now smile. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. right? That's better. Run along. Uh, now, Ron, shall we go? I cannot believe that they fucking destroyed my statue of impotent rage. The cheek, huh? The fucking cheek of it. I gotta make a stop at ammunition. You're meeting me at the Lost MC's airfield. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing Wade's a juggalo because of his face come paint. In, come in. I'll come in your ear when I get a hold of you. Oh, what are you buying at the gun shop? I'm not buying anything. I need a sniper rifle with a high power scope. They say they support local business. Well, we're about to find out if that's true. You guys open this time of night? Melvin! How you feel about brand synergy, huh? TP Industries. Ammunition. Good, because you're about to make a corporate gift of a rifle, a high-powered scope, and a suppressor. Uh, take whatever you want, Trevor. I can't afford another fire. Damn, that Trevor. That sniper on your wall looks like it'll do the job. That's the chestnut. You got a scope and a suppressor for this? It'll be quiet as a mouse. In an advanced scope. Stop selling weapons to that half-wit Cletus. Okay. Go to Ron. Where are we? What are we doing Ron. here? Ron, I got the gun. Meet me at the water tower just north of the airfield. Roger that, Trevor. But you gotta look out, because there's bikers all over this airstrip. Of course there are! Two planes are touching down at the field on a weapons run. We're gonna wait till the right time and appropriate them. We are? Yes, we are. Did I get wrong? I'm waiting at the water tower. Okay, so uh, there is a interesting contradiction here that I think kind of sits underneath all of this. Trevor is smart. I'm going to continue to reiterate that. Trevor might be the smartest person in this game. Trevor would not surround himself by people who are actually incompetent. Ron and Wade, despite the fact that Trevor tells them they're incompetent idiots, Trevor kills whoever he doesn't want to be around. Trevor doesn't hang around with people that he doesn't 
believe can get the job done. So the juxtaposition here is really interesting to me that he talks to Ron and Wade as if they're idiots, probably so that they don't actually access their own worth and sense of competence. Because if they did, they would probably realize that Trevor's not the guy to roll around with. So he has to have them by the balls financially and emotionally to get them away from entertaining the idea that they could do better. Because all the while, they are carrying out these deeds that Trevor is trying to involve himself with. And that's really the power of emotional manipulation is you get people to doubt themselves. And then you come across so confidently that they will trust you to fill in that gap. They will believe that they are insufficient in ways that Trevor understands, thus they trust Trevor to fill in and to lead them. And Trevor has to consistently demean them to ensure that they don't actually access any kind of monochrome of self-worth because they could turn on him super easy. So be mindful of that because he's actually surrounded himself with people who are competent. He just needs them to not realize that they are. He doesn't bring them on these trips if they're not. I mean, listen to Wade talking about how he, or I mean, Ron, when he said, you know, there's a chance that the cops are luring you out by showing Michael on TV. I mean, he doesn't necessarily, he's not necessarily wrong. Like, that's a pretty sophisticated way to look at it, albeit maybe a little bit cynical. It's worth entertaining the idea of. They're not idiots. Trevor just needs them to believe they are. I don't see the hardware, but I do see a hell of a lot of bikers. I'm up the tower, Trevor. I see you, buddy. I'd be all the way up there if it wasn't for my knee. We gotta wait till you can slip in there unnoticed. Should give you the time to plan a route to the gas tank you're rigging up to blow. R really? Yeah, there's no... I mean, come on. If Trevor actually trusts himself and doesn't trust Ron, there's no way he has Ron do that. Enough waiting. This is your moment, Ronald. Whenever you get a doubt in your mind, I want you to remember that I'm watching you through the scope of a high-powered rifle. Right, Trevor. Right, right. Got it. Now, relax. Yeah, after I just said that. The ATV can only take you so far. Park it and don't let them spot you. Can you see me, Trevor? Can you see me? Yes, I can see you, Ron. You wouldn't Ron. believe this, Ron. One of these assholes is having a seizure or something. That's me! That's me! Don't shoot! Well, get a move on! I'm moving! Just keep me covered, okay? Boy, Ron. Hold up! There's a guard standing under the control tower. Good kill, Trevor. Hurry it up, Ronnie. You hear that? I can hear an engine. They'll see that body. Maybe if you shoot those lights on the tower, it won't be so obvious. There's one. And there's the other. You got him! Now don't shoot the guy in the van until he stops and gets out. Hold fire. We gotta see what he's up to. I mean, look, listen, there's a lot of trust here. Ron's directing Trevor.
long, Ooh. sailor. Oh no! Bottom of the tower! Another guy's on his way! Clean shot, Trev! There's another guy at the top of the tower! He's probably looking for his buddy! Woo! Down he goes! Can you get your sights back on me? Come on, man! Come on! You're in my crosshairs again! There's no one left to kill, so get over to that gas tank and plant the bomb! I'm on it, but there's a guy coming out of that building, I think. I can hear him. There's a second guy coming out of the building. Good kill, Trevor. I'm fitting it. Just keep a lookout. And watch out for the tank. It'll go up if you hit it. I think someone's coming. Shit. He sees me. He sees me, Trevor. A bolt from the blue. Chill, Ron. Can you hear that? Chopper incoming. Always hated that chopper. Just fucking drive. You're bikers. It's looking for us, T. We ain't gonna get them guns when they got tactical support. <laughs> Alrighty! That's gonna draw a lot of attention though. The pilot plant didn't work, but they know they're being attacked. Oh, whoa, whoa! Going, Ron. Planes loaded up with crates, Trevor. Just like you said. The rest of the guns must be on the plane down the end of the runway. What are we oh, doing? Let's what? Go, let's go. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. Get me to my plane, Ron! Get me to that plane! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Take your time, Ron. Jesus. This one for you, permit job prick. I suppose there's room for a passenger. Pull up, pull up. We gotta get off this runway. <laughs> I told my contact to meet us just off the coast. Hey, there's a biker on your way, Trevor. I am aware of this. Well, you gotta get him off. Do a roll or something. While the man on my wing presents no immediate danger, I'll do my best to oblige you. That guy is clinging on. I have no idea how to take off. He's still there. I have no idea. I have no idea what the flight controls are. 
<laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, it's the keypad. Okay. Interesting. All right. The guy I can do this. taking receipt of these guns is in a boat just off the coast. Hey, there's a biker on your wing, Trevor. I am aware of this. Well, you gotta get him off. Do a roll or something. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. We can do this. I told my contact to meet us just off the coast. Oh, there he goes. All right. I, I feel safe. So, uh, who might this buyer be? There's only two places this kind of hardware is gonna go. And they are? Up north to our Canadian cousins, where the lost were likely to be sending them. Or? Or other neighbors, those in the south, our Mexican brethren. I'd assume you got all kinds of connections in Canada. Why would you make an assumption like that? It's obvious. Why is it obvious? <laughs> Spell it out for me before I order you to fly that plane into a mountain. Um, uh, uh, because of where you used to operate. Weren't you pulling scores in North Yankton and running cargo over the border? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure I was. Alright. Yeah, like Ron can fly a plane. Affirmative, make the drop. He's no nothing he's nothing to sneeze at. If we fly low, we ain't gonna show up on military radar. God, an Air Force base. Yeah, we're gonna as low as possible to avoid detection by the military base. Okay. How do I? Oh God! If I hit it, nice. Shipment successfully delivered, Ron. Now remember, if you beat me to the airstrip, I'll butcher your carcass and wrap you in cheesecloth. Trevor is a trained Air Force pilot. I can't think of many things that are more regimented, controlled, clean than the military. Trevor presents very much the opposite of how you would have to survive in the military. I mean, the military is, you li you literally are told what to do at all times. You are following orders, always. Doesn't sound like Trevor. Perhaps that did a number on him. And Trevor has resorted to just absolute chaos, squalor, being a mess, potentially as a way to re-grab some autonomy he may have felt he lost, however young he was when he was in the Air Force. And it also brings back the conversation we had about Michael. I mean, who knows? Was he a fighter pilot? We have no idea. But flying airplanes is an adrenaline rush. Trevor may very well experience really significant depression in terms of dealing with everyday life if he spent a whole bunch of time just absolutely... Build up on adrenaline. 
So now we have a little bit of extra insight into him. I think just by knowing that he was in the Air Force, it makes me wonder why he presents the way he does, given that that's his background. And the only thing I can think of is autonomy and trying to regain a sense of control when in some of his most important years, perhaps he was con constantly following orders. And who knows what he saw when he was in the Air Force? Who knows? He's told Ron, well, we, I guess, we, I mean, I'm going to take what he says at face value. He's told Ron he was a trained Air Force pilot. Maybe that's not true. But if he was, I'm going to take it at face value at this point. Some of these things start to maybe make a little more sense. I'm going to fly normal, and I'll rely on you getting there quicker. Yeah, braver than I thought. Stay low over those wetlands, boss. So the guns are going to Mexico? Mexico, yeah. Guy in the boat is Oscar Guzman. He's in with the cartels. If there's a market, this could be a way to expand the business. Like I hadn't thought of that? We might be able to buy into Oscar's thing, but leave that to me, Ron. There's going to be so many examples of this, but right there. Ron has a good idea. Trevor diminishes it by saying, you think I haven't thought of that? So, Ron, your ideas aren't even that good, brother. I already thought of it. I'm already ahead of you. It keeps Ron off balance and questioning whether his contributions are helpful. Maybe Trevor didn't think of that, and he doesn't want to let on that he didn't think of that, and he wants it to seem like it's his idea, so he tells Ron he already thought of it. Ron has no, no way of knowing whether that's true or not. It's really, I mean, th th these are things that happen so quickly and so casually here with Trevor, but it builds into a mountain of evidence that he is constantly trying to people keep people off kilter and in his control so that he's the one that is perceived as competent, in control, has the ideas. You are worthless to me, even if you aren't. That, in a lot of ways, not great. I'm sorry to ask this, but does your contact pay well for this kind of shipment? Because I've got those lawyer fees for the divorce and my settlement costs. Oh, he pays. Better than any in this sorry country. That's good to hear, man. We'll talk about the exact split when we're grounded, okay? All right, T. Just chilling, flying a plane. There's some minor turbulence. I'll use this as an opportunity to say how grateful I am that all of you are here. Thanks for taking the time to watch my content, whether you're here live on Twitch or whether you're watching the bot on YouTube. Your support of my channel and my content means the world to me. Thank you for all of your engagement. Let's see if I can actually land this plane. I have, I, I doubt it. Cause I am coming in way too hot. Oh my god, I did it. We're good. I think that was adequate restitution for my impotent rage statue. That was a mighty fine statue, Trev. That was a mighty fine piece of plastic shit. But there is no price for emotional attachment. I mean, you might forego your cut to uh, alleviate my heartache. I might. Yeah, I mean, I will. Good idea. Wow. I don't have time to dwell on that now. Because we got more runs, Ron. If there is one thing that they need south of that big fence, it is guns. <laughs> Trevor Phillips Industries. Technical expertise, hmm? managerial innovations, unstoppable. Oh, that's right. Now go. I need to meditate or masturbate. <laughs> or both. <laughs>
All right, we can purchase properties, businesses, make some money. Own business properties will pay you a weekly income. Many businesses will require you to complete management missions. Nice. Properties can only be purchased by certain characters. Purchasing this hangar will allow you to undertake trafficking missions for Oscar. Wow. How much does this hangar cost? Well, I already own the hangar, I think. Oh, we made 62k off of that? Holy shit. Hey Trevor, I got a tip off. This particular reprobate has been hiding out at the quarry. Slippery character, by all accounts, you might have a runner on your hands. Thanks, Maud. I know you guys can't see the phone when it. Mackenzie Field Hangar, income $5,000 per ground shipment, seven per air shipment. 150K, that's a lot of money. I don't know that I want to buy that yet. You should have received payment from Oscar Guzman already, right? You know, I'm thinking that runway we took off from Sandy Shores Airfield. Lost are all cleared from there, so we can have exclusive usage. Go over and check it out. I'll have to keep an eye out for you. Ralph Ostrowski. Reward for capture 15k. Last known location. Oh man, so it's kind of like uh they're not gonna tell me exactly where he is, huh? I get, is there a, can I get a satellite view of this map? Alright, I don't know that I'm prepared to buy this airstrip. This car is awesome. All right, let's go. Let's do this. This thing is fun to drive. did, Munchie. What you do? Nothing. What you up to, Cletus? Uh, hunting. Hunting. Hunting what? Retirees? Nah, just stuff. Windows, antenna, tires. Vermin. Ah, so that was you. Tis the season for it. I don't give a shit about no season. <laughs> oh, good, huh? Don't let the regulations get you down. That's what I'm saying. Hey, hey, hey. You want to come hunting with me? It'd be real neighborly of you. Hell. Why not? All right, then. I'm here with you. All right, Cletus. Just hand me a just sniper a rifle. Let's raise some hell, neighbor. Oh, I'm in. I'll introduce you to one of my all-time favorite pastimes. You're going to love this. So, like when we were playing Red Dead, I will point out something that is a bias that many of us carry because of representation, which is that folks that have a southern dialect are stupid. That's the product of representation. That is not a product of reality. There are many of us that are biased into thinking that if a person talks like this, they must not be quite as smart because they're taking a little bit longer with their words. Mm -mm. Plenty of smart folks. 
that have a southern dialect. The dialect is more a product of where a person lives. It's not a reflection of their diet. It's not a reflection of their intelligence. So we should all be mindful when we're in this area and we're talking to folks like Cletus that our bias is to assume that Cletus is dumb, which if Cletus is smart, he can use to his advantage. But it's something that maybe even Trevor is biased in a way he doesn't realize. So I always point this out when we, when something like this happens because it's something that so many folks don't realize is happening when they meet folks that are from the South and speak with this dialect. Okay, you see them three big satellite dishes? A decent shot and they'll go down easier than a whore's drawers. You're a real pillar of the community. Half the folks in this town would sell their own mother, and most of the other half already did. Screw them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Give them hell. Shoot another one. <laughs> no more reality TV for you, Mrs. Gilbert. Okay, one more for the road. Boom! <laughs> Didn't I tell you this would be more fun than a barrel full of pussies? Ooh, you're a classy day, Cletus. No denying that. <laughs> now drive us up to that abandoned motel. I got an even better idea. And do. Wait, drive us. Oh, get in my so, car, Cletus. What now? We gonna try our luck on something less stationary. Ooh, liberals? <laughs> Nothing as slippery <laughs> as that. You'll see. Well, we'll take your vehicle then. <laughs> yeah, sit real You've close to me, way Cletus. Too much time on your hands. Nah, this is just a bit of foolery. I've been busier than hell with the real hunting. The money and wild organic meat these days, you wouldn't believe. Them hipsters will give you their parents' last dime for it. It's gotten so I can't even keep up with the demand no more. All this eat local, small batch, farm to table bullshit. You know, I could maybe use another pair of hands if I can get you up to snuff with that rifle. If you keep on criticizing my shooting, you'll be starring in a snuff with that rifle. He's smart. Which is why I think Trevor is maybe a little more reserved with him. Here we are. I bet you never shut out the tires on a car before? Oh, you'd be surprised. Well, let's see what you got then. Ain't you gonna shoot anything, Cletus? Nah, I do this all the time, and I wanna see how you deal with a moving target. Can you spare any money, friend? This is perfect right here. Pick a car and shoot a tire. Good plain old fashioned fun. Man, that would suck so bad. If you were driving and somebody shot your tire out, say no to Los Santos Landfill in Blaine County. You're no redneck. Oops. All Damn it. Sandy Shores. Anybody can pay the body work. Pop the tires is much more fun. That's there we go. Beauty. And again, Trevor. Uh oh, that guy's pissed. Nice. Go on, one more, just for the hell of it. Wow, that guy's checking his tire. That's unbelievable, man. The fact that they would code that into the game. Such an agitator, Cletus. All these damn tourists coming out here to gop at rednecks. Give them what they want, I say. Man, not too bad, Trevor. Right, let's change it up. Come on, follow me. Just two fellers killing time in small town America. Don't get much better than this, does it? The two most popular guys in town. Am I glad I ran into you? Ain't nowhere near this fun being antisocial on your own. 
Whatever cranks your tractor, I say. What's up next on the hillbilly anarchist agenda? Ever shot anything with a face? Actually, let me ask it again. Ever shot anything with a face on four legs? Now, Cletus, it's important you realize I'm a man plagued by vicious rumors. Fine. Let's head for the roof. I seen some coyotes hanging around down by the road. Reckon it would be real neighborly of us to get rid of a couple. And we are nothing if not neighborly. Right. Let's do our neighborly duty. We'll get a better shot from up here. Man, this place is real run down. Alrighty. Alright, I see him. Looks like we got two packs of coyotes down there. Take a few of them out and the rest should scatter. <laughs> Sing to me now, song dog, and another. Dropped it like a bad hat. That should do it. Nicely done. I reckon you should tag along next time I go hunting out at Polito Bay. I'll show you how to bag an elk. Eh, why not? All right, gotta go. I'll send you a text when I'm about. Oh, thanks, Cletus. I get to keep your sniper rifle? Thank you. You sweetie pie. Oh, we're getting in that van. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. This thing runs nice and smooth. A little squeaky. Nothing a little WD-40 can't fix. I'm not racing in it, though. Wait a minute. We got stock car races? All right. Hold on. We'll do a stock car race. Let's talk to this guy. If I get a stock car, I'm in. What up, homie? Sir? Sir? Maybe not. You do need a car to start it? Aw. All right. I wanted to race stock cars. Look at this Rolls Royce. What the hell are you doing in this neighborhood? Is that Amanda? No. That's real out of place. I don't know. I'm just looking for a decent car that I could maybe... Ah, all right. If we find a nice car, we'll come back. Let's go see what we got going here. Whoa. Trevor. You're still banned. What about these two? Whoever wins gets banned. Ooh. He's one. Ban him. I can't ban him. He's my goddamn husband. Oof. He's young enough to be your son. Ain't the internet a beautiful thing, honey? Anyway, I Ooh. saved your husband. Now get me a drink. I got a meeting. 
Okay. But any more bodies turn up in my bar. I swear, I will not serve you. Mr. Phillips. Ah, uh, here he is. Yes, Mr. Chang, pleasure to meet oh, you. No, I am Mr. Chang's humble translator. Mr. Chang now. Man, I'm high as shit. You all speak Spanish, speak it to each other. Mr. Tao Chung is pleased to meet your acquaintance. Oh, yeah, he seems it. You know what? It's fantastic to know you. If you got time, you should add me to your life invader. This is the best moment of my life. What the fuck is wrong with him? I love this bit. I love this bit. Here we go. I'm out. No, don't go. Please, I beg you. If you go, his father kill me. Why do I give a fuck? You don't. But we hear that Trevor Phillips Corporation is serious business. We pay good price. Things work out. We partner. Make big money. <laughs> I'm rushing. Well, let me show you the operation. This is us. This crank for his own personal consumption? No, no. Mr. Chang Sr. is very specific. He wants a good, reliable source of methamphetamine. We will buy from you here and distribute using established networks. I'm worried that might dilute what our operation's all about. We're part of the slow meth movement, bio regional, locavores only. Mr. So, uh. This is a really nice illustration of the differences in the way that we view drug use. When we see folks like Wade or Ron or Cletus or Trevor using meth, we call them meth heads. We demean them. We don't pay any attention to the circumstances that would lead to them using methamphetamine, methamphetamines. Things like poverty, need to make money, you get wrapped up with the wrong people, you have no education around its use, that kind of stuff. We just look at them and go, idiots, meth heads, undesirables. A rich person uses drugs probably not methamphetamine probably going to use something a little bit more refined like cocaine uses it and we go oh ha, 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 it's, oh it's just it's so quirky or wow yeah you know you gotta but well, you gotta keep up with it somehow we give folks that are wealthy an immense benefit of the doubt from a value attribution standpoint this guy is no different than the folks that are in the trailer park using drugs. Yet, we tend to view them differently. We give one the benefit of the doubt. We blame circumstance for one. We blame personality for the other. And I only point this out so that all of us can become increasingly aware of our biases along these things because it starts to show you that the drugs are not even necessarily the issue that we have. It's who is using them and how we frame them. And then that sets up various systems of inequality that we perpetuate. Chang Senior has much money. I wouldn't be the first man to throw morals out the window for a paycheck. What is he saying? He says he looks forward to doing business with us. 
I actually, like with Red Dead, I don't like that Rockstar gives us the subtitles on that. But I'm going to read them for those of you that might uh, not be able to see the screen very well when you're watching me or listening to me. Exactly, Cavaldes. Yep. Shit, Trevor. We ain't got long. Whoa, 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 whoa. manner, chef. These are our guests, all right? We got Mr. <laughs> Chang and his humble servant. Hey, Lo Shung. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. Trevor, we ain't got long till they get here. Everything in its time, all right? Gentlemen, please. Come check out the storage facilities. Go on. Nice, right? Whoa, whoa. There <laughs> Ample room inside. Mr. Cheng, please, sir, if you will. Let me out! No. Super. Tour will recommence shortly, gentlemen. Should we get the guns? Yes, chef. Help me. Oh, help me. If I knew we were having visitors, I would have done a little spring clean. Ortega has always been told us before. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yep. Of course. I think they're coming through the shop. Let's get to the front. I was heading that way already. It's so absurd. I love it. Here's a Come grenade on, launcher, buddy. Downstairs. Throws it to him. Like it's some super soaker. I can't even imagine how heavy a grenade launcher would be for him to toss it. Behind like here, that. they're coming in. Ortega's here. They know their feet. Let's push them off. Stay off our turf. Ridiculous. Oh man, Get I love it. Get back okay. inside and clean up the lab. We gotta let our potential business partners out of the ice chest. Oh, wow, these guys are all packing money. Yeah, all right, time to recommence the tour, gentlemen. <laughs> I think we have seen quite enough. Time to go, but we haven't hit the main room. I'll swing by and sign the contracts, all right? Just ignore the bodies. Hey, Trevor, are we still going to cook that batch? Fuck yeah! Okay. Okay. The real world cost of a grenade launcher is about $15,000. Jeez. Trevor's surfer has been impounded. Vehicles can be recovered for a small fee. Oh, well, that's fun. See if there's a raceable car anywhere. Ooh, 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 maybe. 
Or is that... No, okay. Alright, that one might be a little bit exploded from when I, you know, went off. Just need some new tires, that's all. Yeah, just a little charred. Engine overheated a little bit. You know, I might kill with reckless abandon, but at least I park in designated spots. What up, fellas? You're gonna meet a bitch. That's where you're gonna meet hey. one. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. Give me a sip of that. What? Come on! My throat's dry as a motherfucker. Why? Is your mother dry when you're... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that, huh? Nothing. Well, it didn't sound like nothing. All right? It didn't seem like nothing. I don't think that it was nothing. No, I didn't mean nothing by it, old man. What, old man? Old man! Fuck you! Creepy old motherfucker. That's right. I said it. Creepy. Old. Motherfucker. No. Jesus. Huh? No, come on. Get what? Up. What? What? Sorry. Now, where were we on, exactly? Get up, huh? Get up. Ah. We're sorry, man. We're sorry. Help! Help! There's a guy with a gun. Hell are all these guys Where coming from? This for an old man. on a rampage you don't have to reload you couldn't keep your mouth shut could you uh oh that thing's gonna blow So I got mad because he called me old. Apparently. I mean... I guess the way to be the youngest person in town is to make sure that nobody's left in town. Yes, he also did insinuate that I have sex with my mother. It is it, that is true. <laughs> and apparently that means I need to slaughter hundreds of people.
find it. Oh god. Trevor wearing a Casio watch? Hell yeah. You sure as shit are one dumb, ignorant, white trash hillbilly, Wallace. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> Chang, spreadsheet. Let's head outside and talk terms. La, 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 la. <laughs> Quite in. Come on, hurry. Gentlemen, I think I have proved that my organization can handle weight. And I think I've proved that my organization is a reliable supplier. In short, it's you and me. Now give me some of that goddamn X. I'm afraid we want to go down a different path. What? We want to explore other opportunities. You big crazy man. You crazy. You want a massage? Shut the fuck up! Our boss, Mr. Chang's father, wants something a little larger. We want to move drugs, perhaps guns. This is my life's work. I mean, since I was a little kid, I, I dreamt big. You know, I've always wanted to be an international drug dealer and, and a weapons trader. All right, so I'm begging you. Let's make this happen. I'm very sorry. You're sorry? You're fucking sorry? I just spilled my fucking guts out to you, and you say to me you're sorry. Who are you working with? Hmm? Who? I'm not at liberty to say. Trevor's off kilter. Not in the, like, conventional Trevor way. Trevor doesn't have a read on these guys. And so we're seeing him pull different tricks out of his hat to try to get them to do his bidding. These are people that are setting a very firm boundary with him. He is not used to that. You're seeing the ways in which he overcompensates and starts shooting from the hip. He tries to soften, he makes up a story, he becomes aggressive, he becomes gregarious. He's doing everything he can to try to get them roped in, to try to get a read on them, and he's struggling to get that read. Probably in part because Mr. Chang is not sober, and his translator is an extension of somebody that Trevor doesn't know or understand. We're seeing what Trevor does when he perceives that he is either not useful or people set boundaries with him and he doesn't have control of the context. He starts to scramble to dig into his bag of tricks to figure out how to do it instead of listening and trying to be curious and figure out what's going on and problem solve with them. Say. Oh, no, no, no. You're at fucking liberty. In fact, I'd say you are obliged. <laughs> Who? Fucking who? 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 The O'Neill brothers. The O'Neill brothers, huh? Yeah. You shitting me? No. Because those fucking O'Neill brothers, I hear a little birdie telling me that they have a bit of a problem. Since one of them's gonna have to be surgically removed from the skull of the other, fuck you guys and fuck them! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah! Ass <laughs> Ooh, he's mad. So now we go and mess with the O'Neills. Okie dokie. That would have been a good car for the stock car race that I just passed. Trevor Phillips. 
Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Trevor, it's business! That wide-eyed idiot was mine! It's business, fella! You want to discuss it? We're at the farm. Ernie, Earl, Walton, Wynn, Dale, Doyle, Daryl, Dan, all of us. Start writing those names on tombstones, because I'm on the way to your lab, and we're going to see how much of a family meth business you got when I'm done! Mm. Oh, oh, you are going to die! I'm having a hard time understanding why Trevor wants to accumulate so much money. I mean, he doesn't spend it. point on the hill. I just spoke to that maniac, Trevor. He's coming. Get down to the meth lab to protect it. Right. I hope he don't get through these idiots, but we know they're idiots. Come on, let's go see them Chinese fellas. Oh, what a great way to internally leverage some groups versus others. Man, this shit happens all the time. You, you... <laughs> Get these guys to do your bidding by suggesting that they're less expendable than the other guys. Those guys are idiots. You're in a position of power. He essentially thinks probably all of them are idiots, but he's using relativity to try to get them to do his will. As if they're doing him a favor by going down into the combustible meth lab while the other guys are on the front lines. And he just sits back in his cozy little wherever he's going to be and doesn't have to deal with any of this. This happens all the time in organizations. You pin people against each other, talk about their skills relative to each other to try to get them to fill certain holes and do things that they might not otherwise do by appealing to what it is that they want to believe about themselves in a given moment. So now we got these little guys in the club, get them to go do their thing while the other guys are a bunch of idiots. Meanwhile, he probably goes and talks to the other guys on the front line and says, man, you guys are braver. Those little cowardly fucks are down below in the in the meth lab. Little weenies. I need my strong guys on the outside. And boom, he just gets to sit. It's, it's using power to get other people to do your bidding so that you don't have to deal with getting your hands dirty. It's exactly, exactly what's happening here. I'm sure many people can connect with that. Oh, how many brothers you got, you inbred freaks? I don't so, know how I'm gonna do it, but I'll kill the lot of you, and I'll torch your cookhouse. Man. All right. Kill you! Oh shit! All right, well, I'm we're going loud. And I'm in a dangerous spot. It's over. Oh, I might die. guy's still alive, jeez. This don't look like a larger operation to me. 
You want to see competition in the marketplace? Here I come, you pricks! Get your own fucking business! Keep him out of here! Ah! I didn't think you'd be over this quick! You assholes! You're mine now! Cover yourself, dumbass! Is someone gonna help Shut Abram him down you? right now! How about a merger, you pricks? Oh, you oh, he's got me pinned in. Fucking get him! Yeah. Jesus, are you Take over you time! Fucker. Keep him away! I'm pinned, I'm pinned! Come on! It's man. over! Cut him down oh, right now! O'Neal's! The creepy motherfucker's over here! You bleed the hell do you get in this house? Why is there a porch with no door? Oh, there's like the door. a larger operation than me. Ooh, yeah! Me in. Get that motherfucker out the house! Uh. Ah. Let's Take see cover. if we can't cut you down to size. He's inside! Look out! Ah. Coming down, fellas. Fell down in the basement. Don't let him down here! He found the cook site! Oh boy. Gas in a meth lab! Oh, you're gonna burn, you idiots! Oh. Wow, those fumes. Yeah, you've only yourselves to blame. Apparently, how is this gas can gonna have enough gas in it to last this long? There's no way. The infinite gas can. Come on, come on. <laughs> the bottomless gas can. I'm gonna burn it to the ground. I want to know when this would actually have ran out. I'm getting it all over myself too. Good lord. Yeah, the most valuable thing in that house was the unlimited gas can. <laughs> wow, all right. Well, I guess they can't do business with them now. Okay, well. Hey, this looks like a potential, I don't know, do I want to go hatchback for the uh, for the stock car race? Eh, we can find better. I want to find a car for the stock car race. That house is so lit, it sure is.
Go on a race. What's a guy got to do to find a nice car around here? Pickup truck. Might be able to buy a stock car on your phone. a boat today, buy a cycle, here to meet your vehicular needs, aircraft, legendary motorcycle, uh, 350k, I don't want to drop 350k, two door, sports car, Need something that meets stock car spec. Lovato Banshee doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little Porsche? Hmm. Be right back. I gotta pee. I gotta think about what car I want. Auto Gauntlet seems like a decent car to use for stock car racing. I guess we could see... What does Legendary Motorsport have? Maybe they got something decent for me. That's just stupid. They got uh, some decent stuff, but out of stock, huh? Eh. I think this is relatively cheap. We're gonna get a Bravado Gauntlet. I think that's good for stock car racing. These feel a little too like exotic. Oh man, the, the Porsche. I don't know, chat, do I splurge? I didn't buy the airport. Oh man, I can get it in. Get it in. We'll get it in yellow. Purchase failed. You have nowhere to store this vehicle. Ah, oh, you. What? Nowhere to store the vehicle. I have a home. Lame. All right. We're just gonna find a car. We're gonna take it. Hey Trevor, meet me down at the lodge. We'll go hunt some real game. Please. Guy was driving a golf cart. That's kind of funny. Got to hear another truck.
I spent my whole goddamn stream looking for a car to use in this. This is important. We're on the prowl. I don't want to go hunting with Cletus because I'm doing some hunting of my own. There we go. That's got promise. That's probably good enough, right? Practice by running away from the police, I guess. To a good home. Get a little practice here. Just one star. Nothing I haven't been able to handle before. Oh, no. find something better on the way we find something better a cop car actually might not have been too bad can't believe this thing can even still run oh shit oh no God. I feel like Starsky and Hutch in this thing. The speed at which you took a pee was impressive. Thank you. I hear that all the time. I've got lam laminar flow. My car is trashed, but I think I can race it. Let's get a race on. There we go. All right, here we go, chat. Nora Freeway. A little evening race? Okay. Hell yeah. Y'all are racing muscle cars, and I've got a Honda Civic. This is what I imagine street races in, like, Vegas would have been like back in the day. Cars like this. Let's go. Ain't ru Rubbin's racing, baby. We're racing stock cars. That's how it be. Oh! I just died. We laps. guy's got the... I've got straightaway speed on this guy. Get a little draft going. 
Oh, yeah. There you go. Lap three of five. All right. There we go. A little bit better on turn one. Turn two hard. And the outside into turn three. Nice. Turn four, same thing. Good. Nice clear stretch. Back into turn one. There we go. Brian, how am I doing, buddy? Am I tickling your F1 fancy right now? Wish I had my force feedback wheel right now. Oh, shit. For fuck's sakes. No! Get out of here. <laughs> I don't think the FIA would be very thrilled with my racing style right now. Nope! Oh, okay, there you go. Honestly, this could have been a cleaner race. I'm a little disappointed. Nobody behind me. We're good. Hell yeah. First place. Burger Shot Stallion is now yours? What? Yeah! Hell yeah. Win a race, you gotta finish it. That's right. Oh, baby, we're driving straight up muscle now. Hey, at least the lady I shot to take that car didn't die in vain, right, guys? What are you doing, Wade? Get back here. You're not uh -oh. even hidden. Have you got it? I've been trying, Trevor. I've been trying. Come on over here, all right? I ain't gonna hit you. I've been trying. I know, I know. I thought you said you were not gonna hit me. I thought you said you were gonna find fucking Michael Townley. There's... Two Michael Townley living in LS. One is 83, and the other one is at kindergarten. <laughs> so, while we get used to Trevor, I anticipate a phenomenon that is going to happen with all of us, myself included, that we need to be mindful of. We see that Trevor, in his unpredictability, is actually pretty predictable. I think the majority of us probably thought that Trevor was going to hit Wade when he came up there. And it is really easy, because of how powerful of a presence Trevor has, for us to blame Wade for that. For us to look at Wade and say, dude, you knew he was going to hit you. Why did you climb up there? You had to have known. Think of how messed up that is. 
We take Trevor as a known quantity. We habituate to who he is. And we start blaming his victims for not knowing any better. Which is not good. Because it stops us from holding Trevor accountable to being better. And it holds his victims accountable to... You should just know that Trevor's going to do that. So we've accepted Trevor's behavior in doing that. When in reality, we should be saying, guys, get the hell away from him. Stop working with him. Now, this is a real phenomenon that happens in real life. When we perceive people as immovable, as powerful, as owning the space, we start to take them as that known quantity and we say, you know what? At some point, it's on us to respond differently to that known quantity. And while that is potentially true, we always should be holding people like Trevor accountable to doing better and maintaining whatever boundaries we need to in order to keep ourselves safe from a person like Trevor. Be mindful. This happens in real life too. I asked a teacher to put him on the phone just to be safe but she threatened to call the cops i ain't no molester trevor shut Did up I before i molest you all right now is there anything else i, I look through the phone directory i did find a, a michael de santa about the right age married with two kids what's his wife's name amanda amanda yeah you're a genius you moron come on uh, come here uh, Woo. Gonna hit him again. Yep. Don't you ever not tell me things I want to know. Sorry, Trevor. Run, you little bastard. Get out here. We're going to Los Santos. Are we? Not you, me and Wade. What about me? You're CEO of Trevor Phillips Enterprises. Find us some business so that we can make some money. And tidy my shit up. Let's go. Wade, come on. I'm driving. You can jerk me off if I get bored. I'm joking. You can suck me off. Are we gonna stop for ice cream? <laughs> um, so, so, so we're headed to Los Santos then? Soon. I gotta make a stop. Oh, what's your stop? Ice cream? No. Wade? Alright, do I take the burger shot car? Do I take the truck? Burger shot car, truck. Conspicuous, a little bit less conspicuous. Conspicuous, a little bit less conspicuous. It's raining. Come on, Wade. Let's not get wet. Road trip? We taking this one? Get in. Where are your people at in Los Santos? It's just my cousin there, Floyd. He's bumped in with his girlfriend in some place called Vespucci Beach. So, uh, what's your stop? Family's important, Wade. Not as important as the man that's employed you, mentored you, and fed you amphetamines this last year, but it's important. We gotta pay this cousin a visit. I ain't seen him in a while, Trevor. All the more reason to drop by. Okay, um, that might be nice. But where are we stopping on the way? For fuck's sakes! Another chapter of the lost have descended on this fine town. Looking to mourn and maybe revenge their dead. I was thinking me and you could pay our respects. Trevor, I, I, I don't think we'd be welcome there. I mean, what do you want to, well, send them on their way to begin with? Grief has a beautiful way of bringing folk together, Wade. Just you wait. And besides, I brought them gifts. Something nice? Like flowers or a cake? This storm is awesome. Trevor deciding to take Wade and leave Ron. I think shows us the relative competence that Trevor perceives the two of them as having. 
I also think that it might show, and I don't know this to be true, but it shows that maybe there's some insight into any like doubts that Trevor has of whether this is actually a good idea. Because on one hand, I could look at it and say, okay, well, yeah, Ron is probably the better guy to run the business while Trevor's out, and that's a big ask. Also, does bringing Ron instill doubt in Trevor? Does he trust Ron to actually follow him in the way that he needs or to unconditionally accept his perception on things? Wade is maybe a little bit easier to have along for this because Wade is more likely to take this at face value and be more easily like inducted into whatever it is that Trevor's doing. At the same time, if you're going to go see Michael and this is that big of a deal to Trevor, you might want your number one guy by your side. So it, it's a real jam for him. And there is the connection with Wade and his family down in Los Santos for sure. It's just interesting to me that we're taking Wade entirely on this. Like why even bring Wade? Trevor seems to be kind of a battering ram. So I wonder if as he's getting closer to Michael, there's a little bit more like insecurity, hesitancy, and maybe some emotion that Trevor doesn't want to attend to. That's making him, I mean, his just his decision making is a little bit off here to me. Not off, but like it feels different. The Lost Camp. Ooh, I got some fond memories of this place. The storm is also ridiculously cool. The assholes here, they slipped. Ice took a hold of this whole place. You're lost, but you are not forgotten, brothers. We'll find that motherfucker. I got you them bombs and that pistol with the thing that makes it quiet on it. Yeah, I took them. Those are my gifts for these pricks. Wait here. Don't get killed. Don't be long. Well, doing this under cover of a storm is really helpful. I got 20. Oh shit, they saw me? Oh no! Oh shit. How did they see me? Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna die. I'm so gonna die. There's no way I survived this. Oh 
god. Yeah, yeah. That was bad. That was bad. Try it again. I got you getting bombed, you got pistol with the thing that makes it quiet on it. Yeah, I took him. All right, I have a uh, I have a silenced pistol too, so I didn't even think about that. There you go. Later, Gators. Jesus. Come on, baby. Run. Run. We're getting in the go, burger go, shot. Go. 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 Going to Los Santos. Here we come. That go okay? I heard Dr. Like banging and screaming. But then not, not the nice kind. Yeah, it went good, Wade. We don't have to think about the loss no more. Let's go find the oh. This Michael Townley guy must have dished you off real bad for you to want to find him so much. He didn't piss me off. The guys that killed him? The federal government. They pissed me off. But... If he's dead, who's this? Now you're starting to grasp the pertinent questions. Who is this guy using my dead friend's tired-ass movie quotes? With my dead friend's alias? And my dead friend's family? In a house that must have been paid for with my dead friend's stashed millions? Wow, that's a real mindfuck. Yeah, I'll show you a fucking mindfuck. I'm gonna stick my boy in your eye. It's gonna come out of your ear, huh? Trevor, idiot. I, I, I didn't mean anything by that, P. Trevor, lube up your eye hole, fucker, because I'm going to fuck your tiny mind, huh? I'm about ready to turn you into roadkill. Uh, please, don't turn me into anything. I just want to be away. Are we nearly there yet? No, Wade. 
Are we nearly, nearly there? You keep this up, you're not gonna get there at all. Can you tell me a story? No way. <laughs> Let's play a game then. You know animal, mineral, or vegetable? I'll go first. I'm nanotechnology. Uh, you're what? Ooh, damn it. I gave it away. I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to say what <laughs> I am. I'll start again. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? Hey, 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 how about this? I'll tell you a story if you promise never to speak again. I like stories. Of course you do. This story's about a boy called Tr Tr uh, Trisha. Is Trisha a boy's name? It doesn't matter. Sounds weird. He was weird. He was the smartest, toughest, weirdest kid in Canada. Well, in the Canadian border region of America. Okay. This boy, he had all the talent, charisma, and guile that a boy could have. But he didn't know what to do with it. He should become a baseball player. No, he shouldn't. Because he's not a fucking sellout idiot. Or hockey player. He did for a while, but his coach accidentally had a stick jammed up his ass. What could he do? I'll tell you in a second, okay? Just let me concentrate on the road. But Trevor! Hey! Aw. That's it. That giant sprawl. Los Santos. Oh! Get you get! Get you get! So, this is Los Santos. I guess it is. I always wanted to come here. But you got stuck in the desert. It's still San Andreas. Best part of the state. So Trevor was a charismatic, very likely gifted child. Probably incredibly talented and very likely did not have the type of developmental scaffolding we would hope that he would have to be able to make proper use of that, which is really sad and probably felt tortured by it. Is gorgeous. So, Michael, this is where dead men come back to life. Huh? It's been nearly ten years, but you'll keep for another day or so, huh, old friend? You mother fucking fuck! I grieved for you! You weren't even fucking dead. You were my best friend. Well, guess who's coming to shit on your doorstep, you fuck! Cousin Floyd don't live here. Los Santos, the city of shitheads. Where else would he be? Floyd's over in Vespucci Beach. Will you tell me the story about that boy, Trisha? Ah, yeah, yeah. Where were we? You were saying what he could do. He, he couldn't throw, and his coach had a had a stick accident like, like I had once. Right, right. But he could fly planes, this kid. So he signed up for the Air Force to fly all day long and bomb villages and maybe just maybe drop the nuke. And it was all going well until one day, just before he got his wings, an evil witch in charge of psychological evaluations told him he was unstable. Grounded him for life. Oh, That's shit. terrible. It was. Sent him into a deep pit of doubt and despair. And just then, ju just as he hit rock bottom, he met a fat, silver-tongued troll under a bridge. That's cool. What was the troll's name? Mike. Mich Michelle. A lady troll? Yeah, he had tits like one, but no, no, he, he was a boy. Michelle is a funny name for a boy. Well, this was a funny boy. He sat under his bridge, robbing anyone who passed him by. Sometimes he'd go into town and rob his shops and inns and such. And he persuaded our hero that maybe he should rob people too. And you know what? Little Trisha did rob people, and little Trisha was good at it. And they lived happily ever after? For a while, until the troll met another troll in a strip club, and they fell in lust, and he bought her a pair of fake troll tits, even bigger than his real troll tits, so she could make more money stripping. 
maybe a little on the side without call work, but you didn't hear that from me. Wow. And then she pushed out a pair of little trolls, and the big bad troll under the bridge went soft. Hold on, what? So little Trevor made a new friend called Brad, and he was thinking about cutting Mike off when it all went to shit, and Mike got killed and Brad went to jail. Did all the name checks change, or am I missing something? Shut up! And then the fat, ugly troll came back from the dead, and the news picked it up. Our hero decided to go out looking Wait. for him. I'm sort of following it, I think, but what happens in the end? That, Wade, we do not know. Well, this is all making more sense. So, Michael is essentially a friend, but also a stable father figure to Trevor that gave Trevor a sense that he was competent and good at what he does. And it's really... When people are vulnerable and they do not have a solidified sense of self and they feel lost, they are often at their most vulnerable because from a survival standpoint, that's not a great position to be in to belong in a group. And so you need to figure out an identity so you can have a role in a group and survive. Well, Michael comes along. He takes Trevor under his wing. He gives Trevor a sense of purpose. It's the exact same kind of thing that happens when cults prey on people who are vulnerable and isolated. I'm not saying that that's what Michael did, but it's the same level of importance. Trevor then gets bonded to him, probably worries about whether Michael will ever abandon him because of how important that relationship is. Michael gets invested in a family, has kids. Those become priorities. Trevor doesn't know how to invest in those types of relationships and take on that kind of role. So he looks at Michael and says, you're leaving me behind. You're abandoning me. And instead of processing that and handling the emotions as they are, that probably got channeled into a significant amount of anger toward Michael. And then Michael disappears, and it's essentially a massive attachment injury for Trevor. Trevor kind of goes chaotic, spirals out of control because he doesn't have the stability that he was using from Michael's presence. I'll bet Trevor had his shit together when he was with Michael because Michael gave him direction. Without direction, Trevor creates chaos. Trevor tries to be the one in charge, but doesn't really know how to cultivate relationships in a meaningful way because he's got an unstable attachment. So Michael's importance here is not to be underestimated. And... It'll be interesting to see how Trevor interacts with him when they run into each other. It's becoming a lot more clear to me why this is so important for Trevor to find him. He's going to talk all aggressive like, but really I think Trevor is experiencing an immense amount of vulnerability right now. Which really seems to have been a theme in this game is characters that overcompensate for vulnerability. Yeah, there are parallels to the uh, Arthur-Dutch relationship here between Trevor and uh, Michael. Michael being Dutch, Trevor being Arthur. Although, I don't know that Michael's quite as, ugh, as Dutch, but it does have similar tones. Oh, we're near Floyd's house. I'm seeing it on I find maps. I'll give you directions. Keep it straight now. Now, keep going. This one's a riot. Just keep on a minute. This is the place, I think it is at least. Cousin Floyd! Pick up here, Trevor! Floyd, it's me, Way! Who? Me, Wade, your cousin. Who? Your cousin! <laughs> Fuck! He's come to visit you, you rude <laughs> Now get up off the floor and fix me a fucking drink. Oh, you wait. <laughs> I heard you was off smoking meth somewhere. No, not somewhere. Here, he's gonna smoke meth here. Give me a fucking lighter. You can't smoke here. 
Eh? <laughs> this is my girlfriend's place. She's at a business conference. You can't smoke here and you can't stay here. How's it going, cousin? It's been a while. Yeah, I ain't seen you since you was called Nevelyn's bed. A guy would never prove. You gotta go, both of you. My girlfriend, she'd kill me if she knew I had guests. Well, it's not much of a girlfriend if she don't like your family. Now, would you get me a <laughs> fucking drink? I'm not gonna ask you again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, uh, I ain't got no booze. Well, then you go out and fucking get me something. You go too. All right, okay. Fuck! <laughs> Lloyd's apartment can now be used as a safe house. You can save vehicles by parking them in the driveway. Cool. Wow. Another portrait. Self-portrait. Okay. Well, uh, not great, man. He just barges his way in, takes control, scares everybody, and gets his way. I don't understand the big portrait thing. I, I that doesn't I, I don't get it. That's weird. But hey, it is what it is. Well, it was a night full of Trevor. What's up, Chris? And uh yes, Trevor can be pretty hilarious. Uh despite the fact that he is pretty He's rough around the edges. I got to say, though, he, he comes off as unstable, but also just very much in control. Like, I have a hard time seeing him as unhinged because he really just reads every environment he's in and responds accordingly. So he seems lost in terms of, like, a sense of purpose. But... He's not totally off kilter in the way that I think a lot of people often talk about Trevor as being off kilter. So it'll be interesting to learn more about him. See how he responds to Michael. See how he, I guess, inevitably responds to Franklin. I think it's going to be a big deal when he runs into Michael. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen. I think he might be pissed, but I also think that Michael probably has some form of calming presence for him or some form of powerful presence where Trevor will see Trevor potentially back down in the way that people back down to Trevor. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see that. And that's going to be in the next episode. So thank you very much friends that are on YouTube for watching the VOD. I appreciate you taking the time to go through the Trevor saga here with me. Make sure you leave a comment. If there's anything that you want to say, I love reading the comments. I try to respond to the ones that I can Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it and made it all the way to the end. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'm live on Twitch if you ever want to catch us live and chat with everybody that's here. Uh, thank you again for supporting my channel. I'll see you in part six.